yesterday. So we'll start with a new chapter, a small chapter called a risk management. Now, what we are going to cover in this risk management? So there is a theory which we will discuss later. Here we are focused only on the problem solving perspective. Now, risk management, there are different types of risk. So these are all theory questions, four mark questions. Like you have got a strategic risk. That means you have taken some wrong strategy. You have entered into a wrong market. You have to choose a wrong product to sell. You have got a compliance risk. You didn't comply with the GST loss. You have got some operational risk, raw metal finished, liquidity is not there, cash flow, cash is not there. You have used a short term funds into long term thing. And you have got a financial risk, like debt equity ratios have increased. You are not able to service. You are not maintain some liquidity. So these are all your risk, different type of risks an organization is going to face. Now, what is value at risk? Now, value at risk is a measure of risk of investment. Given the normal market condition in a set of period, VAR, value at risk estimate, how much investment might be lost. See, today if you invest 100 rupees, today only 100 rupees is not lost, no. There is some standard deviation for the stock. At a given point of time, how much I might lose? That's what you are trying to find out, value at risk. If you invest in any security, at a given point of time, how much I might lose? VAR is, going to, VAR is going to answer two questions. What is the worst case scenario and what will be the loss? Now it will show you at, uh, at a given time how much immediately. See what happens, why it is important for me. At least if I come to know, I am prepared for it. So that the moment that happens, I can square off my position, come out of it. If I don't know how much immediate loss I might happen. Okay, I have invested 100, 1 crore rupees. Suddenly 80 lakhs is lost. I am in great danger, no? In that case, I'm, I should never invest in such things. But if somebody calculates and tell me, look, there, there is a risk involved. But the immediately, on at a, at a point in time, you may immediately lose some 20 lakh rupees. I, I know that. That means the moment that incident happens, no, I'll square off and come out. So that at least 80 lakhs I'll save. So value at risk is going to tell you value at risk, how much risk it is there. So the standard deviation is the measure of risk. We know that in portfolio management, correct? Standard deviation is the measure of risk and risk of the stock returns. But it is a standard measure of deviation based on the past data. But standard deviation does not specify the maximum amount of deviation from some confidence level. No, It is not going to tell you the how much maximum amount you might lose. It will tell you, okay, if it is a plus or minus. Hence, we are going to use VAR to determine the maximum deviation with certain level of confidence. That means we are going to find out the probability. How much probable I might lose? Now, VAR is found out with one formula called X into Z into standard deviation. X is nothing but investment value. Z is the probability of loss or value from the normal distribution table and into sigma is the standard deviation. No, we have to calculate. I'll explain that. Same like our black and Scholes. Okay, we have we are there black and Scholes. I'll explain the distribution theory and all. So that when you want to start start reading the black and Scholes, no, that becomes very easy for you. In the same something similar we are going to do. See now what you are trying to find out your value at risk. Value at risk means value should be there. What is your value? X is your value. You have invested so much. Risk means what? into standard deviation. Now at a point means you are finding out the Z, that means probability. Simple. You understand from that perspective. It is very easy to remember. Value at risk means I have got a value. Risk is multiplied by the uh, risk standard deviation into Z is the probability. What is the probability that I might lose that much of amount? Now what is Z and how to determine the value of Z? Understand this example. Now you have got a value 21 lakh rupees. You have invested in one stock. The expected return is 20%. Standard deviation is 10%. And you are expecting 40% return from the stock. Required. You wanted 40%. Now automatically the moment you want 40%, the risk is also going to increase. Now if I plot X bar is nothing but average return 20%. We have done the same. We have done in black and shows also. Your standard deviation is 10%. That means what return you will get might be plus or minus 
and we find that the maximum 90% of the returns no it will fall within this range only there is a range of z value statistics okay standard normal distribution table now you wanted 40% return now you are looking what is the probability of 40% return for given risk of thing so there is a standard deviation of 10% from the expected return of 20 what is the probability that we get 40% which deviates 20% from the x bar that means there is a deviation of 20% right now and what is the probability that i might get because see this normal distribution is all the returns what you have got till now and majority of the returns are near the mean now you wanted one one of return which is far away from the mean now you wanted to find what is the probability so you always use one you have to find out the cumulative value of this particular table through z tables so for this what you need you need one z value ah, z value is calculated always from a formula called x minus x bar divided by standard deviation what is that x minus x bar x is your actual x required return minus x bar is the average return that means i get sharp ratio type excess return per unit of standard deviation when you do this what you get sharp ratio no sharp ratio is using rf here you are trying to find out excess return over the mean per unit of return that is nothing but z so how much is the excess return you are looking it is 2 per unit of risk 2 is the excess return per unit of risk that is 40 you wanted 20 is the average return 10 is the standard deviation now how much excess you are looking uh, you are looking 20 percent more that means per unit of risk how much 2 percent more per unit of risk okay now what we will do that mean of 20 percent we will change because now we have to go to the z table to find out the probability the 20 percent we will make it zero okay mean has become zero now this is my normal distribution table which is exactly half it will become half i can fold it it is replicate both the places will replicate each other now i wanted that two right that value number two i will plot it here and i wanted a cumulative area of this cumulative area now there can be three possibilities in the examination question they will give you a probability of cumulative area of one three i have to interpolate and see or they will give this is called this is called the area to the left they may give you area to the left or right that means they will give you this area same thing huh? we discussed this or this area this area or this area but what i wanted i wanted a cumulative area so i should do one minus area to the left or right if they give me cumulative area my problem is done i wanted cumulative they have given me cumulative if they give me area to the left and right then what i should do i should divide that by two then i got or and minus one if they give me sum of both there are only three scenarios okay either they will give you cumulative area no headache only area to the left or right then take any one value minus it from one you got a cumulative because entire table is considered as one but sometimes they will give you left and right then what you should do left plus right they have given together right divide it by two you get or left or right then one minus this now what is the meaning of this See, the probability of getting written above 40 percent is 2.28 that means getting up to 40 percent is how much 1 minus 2.28 97.72 percent that means for a given 10 percent risk 20 percent excess return whatever i want now there is a 97 percent probability so now what you do the value of stock is 1 lakh and standard deviation is 10 percent maximum deviation at the confidence level it is 97.72 so 97.72 percent if you plot here because they will give you probability what is the probability of loss so you want to find out ulta no backward calculation you want to find out that two factor now area to the left is two there can be two times standard deviation from the mean it is two times standard deviation that means there are risk of two times 
if you are wanted this confidence level of some 97 percent and all probability there is a risk of two times the standard deviation from the table if they give me a two i will calculate 97 percent from the table if they give me 97 percent from 97 percent i will calculate two so don't worry because in every examination question there is one already one standard confidence level is there so already you can memorize the number also now where will be 1 lakh into 2 into 10 point 10 20000 that means two times the standard deviation will be your loss at any point of time for given probability or expectation okay so in exam the confidence level probability will be 99 percent for which z value will be 2.33 maximum time okay so they should be giving you let us see different different study metal questions and all we should be able to understand it so always it is 2.33 simple this z is 2.33 so i have told you logic behind 2.33 2.33 means there is some probability of loss or excess return something so that one now take out example question number one given below the details of stock a value of the stock is 3 lakh z is 2.33 standard division 30 what is one day for and 10 day for see to find out one day i need a standard deviation of one day right i need a standard deviation of one day i have to find a one day no to, if in one day how much i might lose or in 10 days how much i might lose so i can't apply 15 percent per annum no so how to find out one day standard division? Can you tell me? How should I find out one day standard division? See, fifteen percent standard deviation. This case fifteen percent per annum. I want to know one day risk. How much? Will I do into one day by three hundred and sixty? I can't do it for standard deviation. That's why if you refer Black and Scholes formula, they use one method called standard deviation is nothing but 15 into square root of time. V square root of T if you refer Black and Scholes formula because it will give you proportional standard deviation for the period. Okay. So one day war, one day standard deviation will be 15 into one day order by 250 because it is considered a stock market, right? Stock market is open for 250 days. You are getting this point why we are doing somewhere another place I will explain okay this concept of this one one day by this square root of t square root of t it is a standard deviation this is per annum right not one day so how to find out one day standard deviation I can't do 15 into one day by 250 not possible I can do it for variance not for standard deviation the only way to do find out proportionate standard deviation per day or per day 10 day per month I have to do square root of time. So if I want to find out for one month I can say, say if this, if this is for 12 month standard deviation. So I say 15 into square root of 1 divided by 12. I will get per month standard deviation. It is 0.9487. This is one day standard deviation because I want to find out the value at risk on any one day. Or I want to find out value at risk for any 10 days. In 10 days, how much I might lose? Follow? Suppose if I invest in share market, in next 10 days, what is the maximum amount I might lose? I want to find out. So what I do? Investment value today into 2.33 factor into my 10 days standard deviation. That means 2 times, 2.33 times the 10 days standard deviation is the maximum loss. Might happen. I hope it's clear. Sorry, 250 because it's a uh, stock market is open for 250. It is assumed that it is 250. Otherwise, we will see if in they specifically tell me any days, no, let us consider that days. Otherwise, we will consider 250. Okay, this is an example. Let us see the study material question whether they will tell me number of days to be considered, should I consider in month. If they do not tell you anything, consider 250. Let us see study material solution. Clear? So now I will multiply 3 lakh into 2.33 into 0.94. I say that look at any one day, if I invest 3 lakh, 
there is a possibility that I might lose max to max 6,631. There cannot be more loss than this. I have got 99% confidence. Followed? This is one day. Now, if I ask you, okay, in 10 days, how much maximum you might lose? In 10 days, how much maximum you might lose? You can't do into 10. You can't do 6631 into 10. Again, you have to do 3 lakh into 2.33 into 10 days standard deviation. Followed? Is this clear? Yes, what is the doubt, sir? No? No, this is one day. There, there are two questions in there. Investor wants to know how much I might lose in one day or if I, how much I might lose in 10 days. I do, that, that's not the way, no. Because standard deviation is never calculated in a simple way of 1 to 1 by 250 and all. If that is the case, I could have done 8 to 10. Standard deviation is always found out like this, V into square root of T or standard deviation into square root of T. So the maximum loss, understand, but see, please, very important students. It is very important because examination question I will show you. It is a pure conceptual question, examination. You need to understand this number. What is the meaning of this number? If you invest 3 lakh at any point of time, in any day, you might lose maximum 6,631. This is the maximum loss I may incur in any one day. But if I keep myself invested, one day I might lose 500 rupees, another day I might lose 600 rupees, third day I might lose 4000 rupees, fifth day I lose 10,000 rupees. Like that in 10 days, how much a maximum I might lose? We are going to calculate it. Again, not perfect. Huh? It is some estimation because we know that share market is estimation. So, square root of standard division for 10 days will be 3%. So, war will be 3 lakh into 2.33 into 0.3. So, I say that the maximum loss for 10 days will be 20,097. Clear? Concept of war is clear, no? It is not standard division. It is how much maximum loss. Okay, given below are the details of stock B. Value of the stock is 500 lakhs in your investment. Standard deviation is 1%, calculate one day war at 99% confidence level. Now, what you do? What to do now? Now I need Z value, Z value they didn't give me. But we know that 99% means it is 2.33. So I can go and straight away put one equation here. I need not calculate standard deviation separately. One day war is equal to 500 into 2.33 into 15 into square root of 1 divided by 250. I can have one more. Once you used to, you know, you need not calculate standard deviation separately and do this. You can straight away use this value. First part of the question is clear. See, in exam question also, same similar question had come. They didn't tell you that Z value, but it is 99% confidence only, 2.33. If you have got a Z table, you can find that. Okay? Now, the maximum loss will be 11.05 in one day. I'll move to the next one. Yes, now let us understand a multi-stock, a portfolio. I got a stock A, stock B. The correlation between them is 0 0.65. Calculate one day war of the portfolio not of individual stock, you need a for a portfolio at 99% confidence. So, how to calculate now? Standard deviation portfolio not given they, and they have given me standard deviations over here. Individual stocks standard deviation given and they have given me the portfolio's correlation. Weight I can calculate. You remember that big formula because it is 0 0.65. It is not perfect positive, not perfect negative. Then the only option is Standard deviation of A square into weight of A square plus standard deviation of B square into B square into 2 times weight of A. Remember that formula? 
so that way i can find out the portfolio okay so we'll go for method one now first write method one there are two methods to calculate the portfolios very value at risk first thing we found to individual how to find out first i will find out one day var for a can you tell me what is my one day var for a i said 2 lakh into 2.33 99% confidence if the question is silent you can assume 99% confidence into 20 is the standard deviations 1 divided by 250 square root of 10 how much you got rupees 5894 then you will find out one day war for b which is 3 lakh investments into 2.33 into 15 is the standard deviation 1 by 250 which comes to 6631 clear so what i have done i have split that into calculation of standard deviation so you can calculate straight away one day work for this one day for this Now, how to find out the war of the portfolio? Apply the portfolio risk. War is nothing but the risk, right? This is a risk. I can move further. Okay, now F find out the war of the portfolio. How? War of A square plus war of B square plus two times war of A, war of B into correlation. Which is 5894 square plus 6631 square plus two times 5894 into 6631 into 0.65 okay no weights here huh? so i get 11380 rupees so this is my portfolio's risk at any given point uh, for one day at any given point of time yes or no any doubts what is the confusion see these questions have come already two times in exam it, it has come Two different three times it has come from this chapter in your new syllabus, but all four four mark questions, simple questions. Done. This is done. Okay, so now in method one, we found out this is 11380. So in method two, also I should be getting the same. So let us go for the method two. What is my method two? I will find out the portfolio's standard deviation. I know my total portfolio investment. I will find out the portfolio standard deviation by using portfolio management uh, chapters formula. And then I'll find one day work for the portfolio. No? Simple. So I'll go for 20 square into 2 by 5 square because of, I need a weight now. Portfolio's risk. 15 square into 3 by 5 square. 2 times 2, 20 into 2 by 5, 15 into 3 by 5 into 0.65 because they gave me core variance. If covariance was given, I would have removed this standard deviation. 20 and 15, I would have removed. 2 into weight of A, weight of B, I would have done. So, if I solve this, I am going to get 15.45% per annum. Clear, right? Yes, one issue. Doubts? You wanted previous slide, okay. Okay, now find out one day work. This is done, right? This is done. Yes, so how much is the value at risk? So you have got 15.45 is the standard deviation. So you have got 11.382, 11,382, 380, 382. It should be same. Done? Understood, no? How to find out for individual stock? How to find out for the portfolio? Yes, now we'll go to the next study material question. Suppose you hold 2 crore shares of X limited, rupees 2 crore shares 
whose market price is standard uh, whose market price standard deviation is 2% per day and assuming 252 to trading day see they have told you specifically here i have to take 252 if they tell me but here there is no requirement why because the standard deviation is per day only they have given me why i should take 252 determine the maximum loss over the period of one trading day and 10 trading days with 99% confidence level 99% is 2.33 so what is my 1% confidence level sorry uh, nine, uh, one day confidence one day where what is my one day war simple 2 crore into 2.33 into 0 0.02 How much I am going to get? 9,32,000 is the maximum loss you may have incur one day. Always 2.3. You can always give 99% is 2.33. Which one? Other person they should tell you, you no, know, then they should tell me. Otherwise, they should supply you the loss tables. And if you find out 99%, then go 99%. See, generally in uh, Zach and Shows, what will happen? No? We get value of D1, which is 1.87, something like that. We go to the table and plot 1.7 against that different table percentages will be given 0 0.09, 0 0.08. We'll find that. If they tell you 99%, go and find out 99%. Corresponding value is this 2.33. And see, you no, know, in the study material and example, exam question, what they have given. So don't worry, they should give you the number. Now, calculation of 10 day war. How to find out 10 day war now? My first two components are same 2 crore multiplied by 2.33. How to find out the standard deviation for 10 days? Ah, 2 square root of 10. 10. Yes, ah, but be careful here. Huh? When, okay, always do one thing, students. Always find out the standard deviation first. Because when you do 2 into square root of 10, you got this. But when you, you have to multiply into point, in point terms. Or you can consider 10 square root into 0 0.02. It is not going to work out. Ah, you can do like this. Otherwise, you make it 2 crore into 2.33 into 0 0.02 square root of 10. You do it like this. All this express in, no, instead of divide by 100, Whenever you express standard deviation, no? always standard deviation you express in terms of percentage. But generally in black and shows, we will put the number only there, 15, 20 like that. But here you do not put, things might go wrong. So if you put 0 0.02, it is perfect, 0 0.0638. Square root of 10 days, because this is one day, one day, no? I want for 10 days, it is 10 by 1. Ah, why not multiply because this is a, uh, okay, maybe I will I have done that, some other places I will explain you, okay, so this is a, what are called statistical way, see if you have given a variance, say 400 and find out say one day, I say one divided by 250, but for a standard division I cannot do it, standard division is squared value, no, squared value I cannot multiply with the 1 by 250. It is a squared value. So, I have to do squared 1 by 250 in same terms with this because variance is not squared value. So, I can simply do 2 by 12. Since this standard division is a squared value, I have to do squared time. I hope, yeah, that should be fine, correct? But raising question is important. Huh? No, this question even did not come to me also, but now also I, again I got that logic. Unless question is asked, you will not get the answer, no? So, 29,46,984. No, because it is not for 2 days, 252 days, no? This, this is already, this you must have got already for uh, 1 divided by 252. So, if you say, what is your per annum? I say, 252 square root into 2. Your actual standard division is 
seven five percent per annum. So if you want to find out one day standard deviation, so thirty one point seven five into one divided by two fifty two square root. You get two percent. I hope it's clear, Arjun. That's why we didn't do one divided by two fifty two. Concept is clear, right, everyone? Yes. That's it. Four marks simply. Nice, right? Okay, so we'll move to one more question. You want to see that? We'll move to one more question. Again, there are hardly two questions. Which one percentage? Two percent. Standard division they have given, no? They will give always percentage only. In other words, you have to always take. Even the percentage is given, you have to take zero point zero two only, not full two. Remember a separate way of calculation here. Now, question number five. This is an examination question. Investment in share of A two hundred lakh. Investment in X Y Z two hundred lakh. Daily standard deviation. Be careful here. It's a daily standard deviation of both the shares is one percent. Now coefficient correlation is zero point three. Required determine ten days ninety nine percent value at risk of portfolio. Given the Z score from the normal table is two point three three. They are told here specifically. Show your calculation up to four decimal points. Four marks. So which method you will choose? Which method you are going to choose? You can always find out one one day, one day for X A B C, one day for X Y Z, and then take a square root, find out the ten day. Uh, no one minute. Huh? They asked you to calculate ten days. Sorry, not one day. Ten day for A B C, ten day for X Y Z. That way you can do. Or you can simply calculate the portfolio standard deviation. Can you calculate portfolio standard deviation? No. Why? Because they have not given you standard deviation for A, standard deviation for B. They are not given, no here. Ah, are yeah, they are given? Sir, I am sorry, I am sorry. So you can apply two methods. You can find out portfolio standard deviation, and then they can find out ten days war, or find out ten days war for A, B, C, ten days for X, Y, Z, and you can do it. Okay, which one you will choose? Okay, first do one. Do first one. First method where you find out ten day war for A, B, C, X, Y, Z. Yes, students, please pause the video and do the working. So first thing, I'm going to calculate the ten days war. For this, I will calculate the standard deviations, which is three point one six two three and three point one six two three. Same, both are one days, no one percent, right? Same standard deviation. Then I will go for war for X, Y, Z. I get fourteen point seven four six three, and war for A B C it is fourteen point seven three six three. Both are same because it's the same amount of investment, same standard deviation, same confidence level. Which one? One percent? Uh, no, no, because there's a correlation is different. No, we could have taken when you remember if it's a perfect positive. Just matter of a weight, no? It's the same weight also. It's the addition of both. That means one only it will come. Well, only if it's a perfect positive, not even perfect negative. In perfect negative, you minus it. So here it is, you cannot use it because the correlation is point three. And please mark this question important. Uh, one day before you have to solve this. Next, I will go for the variation uh, where of AB. Okay, I will do no weights here. Twenty three point seven six lakhs. Uh, okay, there is an equation. Yes, let me try to find out what is the logic behind. There is no weight. There is a weight. No, no, it is not a question of saying. But there should be some logic that we are going to ignore this weight. Okay, let me think over it. Yes, so you got this twenty three point seven six. Yes, what happened? You got this twenty three point seven six. Yes, Anna. What happened? Where it went wrong? Our weight should not be taken. No? 
अब भाई आई लेट मी सी लेट मी चेक भाई या वेरी वैलिड क्वेश्चन आई टुक वेट फॉर द स्टैंडर्ड डिविजन ऑफ द पोर्टफोलियो इफ आई वांट टू फाइंड आउट द स्टैंडर्ड डिविजन ऑफ द पोर्टफोलियो देयर आई विल टेक द वेट बट इफ आई वांट टू फाइंड आउट द वेरिएबल वैल्यू एट रिस्क ऑफ पोर्टफोलियो देन आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू टेक द वेट्स ओके लेट मी चेक व्हाट इज द लॉजिक देयर शुड बी सम लॉजिक वैल्यू एट रिस्क because i have not taken the percentage because here these are all the value that may be the reason na huh? because this 14.7363 is rupee not my percentage of return is not percentage no is the amount right absolute amount okay let me see let me see what the this is the concept you yeah, are not take the weight otherwise you calculate with the weight standard deviation and this consider the position consisting of 2 lakh dollars in gold and 3 lakh dollars in silver the annual volatility of the gold and silver is 20 and 15% what is that standard deviation per annum correlation is 0.65 you are required to calculate 10 days 97.5% confidence level var how much does the diversification is going to reduce the var so you are required to calculate 95.5% confidence var for the portfolio not for individual stock and how much it is going to reduce individual uh, var that means i need to find out individually first and see if i am going to add it individually how much is the total versus as a portfolio as a whole how much my var is going to come given that score is 1.96 How much? Uh, how much diversification? Let's first, first of all, I'll find out what is my VAR for gold. I will get some XMO. Say, say for example, I will get uh, say ten hundred rupees. I will say VAR for silver. I'll say hundred rupees. I'll say two hundred rupees. Individually, the total is three hundred. I will go for VAR of portfolio. I'll get say two fifty. I say three. look, my loss got reduced by fifty because of the portfolio. because the risk is different no for both the thing no just i am going to just minus it okay not big deal okay can you do it quickly so first thing i am going to calculate the 10 days standard deviation of gold 4% and silver 3% standard deviations next i am going to calculate the 10 days variance value at risk of gold which comes to 15680 dollars and silver 17640 dollars this is a individually now if i take a combination of both if i make a portfolio then i will go with the portfolio no weights there 15680 plus 17640 so i get 30275 This is a portfolio's value at risk. Now, what the benefit of diversification? Okay, so the benefit of done. The benefit of diversification is individually. I am having fifteen six eighty plus seventeen six forty. This would have been my total on individual basis. Meaningless this type of calculation. So, since if you go for a portfolio both, so you have a var got reduced to three zero four five. Meaningless, obviously no. the moment individually invested means you can't say 33 because it can never be 33 individually it is so much but the moment you invest in both automatically it will come to 33 to 75 so this is one way of presentation that look this is the benefit of diversification yes sir so we'll move to the next question uh, so not not sorry don't mark it important not important okay X has invested fifty thousand each in A and B. Okay, now your weight is zero point five is to zero point five. The variance of the stock is eighteen and thirty percent. So take the square root, you get the standard deviation. This is per annum. Correlation is zero point four, not perfect positive. So you have to use that big formula to calculate the portfolio. Calculate the portfolio standard deviation. Easy. You can do it as a homework. Easy, right? portfolio standard deviation weight is known individual stocks square root you take you to get the standard deviation calculate the benefit of diversification what is that benefit so if i go for the stock my individual 
standard deviation of A is 9 percent, standard deviation of B is how much? 30 square root is 5.47 percent. Sorry, 18 square root is how much? 4.24, 5.27. So, if I add 5.27, I will get so much. Because of the portfolio, my risk has come down by so much. Now, calculate the one day war at 99 percent. So, 2.33 is my way. Sorry? No, I am taking square root of it. No? Because I want a standard deviation. To calculate portfolio standard deviation, I need individual standard deviation, which is nothing but no. Now, calculate the portfolio one day bar. Now, what you got when you do the square root of 18, you got 4 point, 4 4.24 per annum. So, you have to do 0 0.0424 into one day by 250 square root and to 50,000 for A for B, then calculate for the portfolio. All right. You can do it, no? You got the picture, how to do it. Yes, so first note down the values. So, standard deviation of A is square root of 18 and 30, not required to be noted down only, because they asked you square root of standard deviation of the portfolio. So, you use this equation, because weight is 50 percent, correlation is given, and we have found out square root of 30 and square root of 18. So, it is 4.08 percent per annum. Clear? Now, what is the benefit of port diversification? Risk of stock A is 50,000 into 4 percent. Risk of stock B is 50,000 into 4 percent. So, you must have lost individually so much. Total individual risk and the portfolio risk of 1 lakh is only 4 percent. So, 779 is the benefit of diversification. All right. You can't add 2 percent, 4 plus 5 compare with 4, that is meaningless. So, you have to multiply with the value of the portfolio or individual stocks value and say this is the benefit I am going to get. Clear? And then they asked me calculate the value at risk of portfolio. So, I can move further. Now, first I will find out one day's standard deviation 4.08 into 1 by 250, then one day's war of A 601 for 1 lakh investment, 1 lakh no sorry 50,000 I believe. Ah yeah sorry, this is my portfolio standard deviation no, 4.0 is, is my portfolio standard deviation no. So, this is my total portfolio value. So, again I need not find out for A and B separately. I can do that, I will get 601. Clear? Okay. So, now we will move on to the next question. Mark this question important. Because it has come for exam. Now, you understand how simple thing is given in an examination in a very tricky manner. Now, on Tuesday morning, before opening of the capital market, Okay, when Tuesday morning, an investor while going through his bank statement has observed that an amount of 7 lakhs is lying in his bank account. Okay, today I want to ready, I am ready for now trading stock market. I want, I was just, I before going through, I just took my bank statement and said, how much money is lying in my bank account? I have got 7 lakhs, understood? This amount is available for use from Tuesday till Friday. How many days? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, four days it is available. The bank requires minimum balance of 1000 all the time. So, you need to maintain minimum balance of 1000 rupees. So, how much you need, you get, is available for trading? 6,99,000. The investor desires to take a maximum possible investment. He want to maximum, how much is available? No, at 6 lakh nine. he want to go for that where the value at risk should not exceed the balance lying in his bank account. Definitely, he does not want to take extra risk. Today, he is ready to lose 6,99,000 because bank wants minimum 1,000. Today, he wants to lose, ready to lose 6,99,000. What is the maximum amount he is going to trade? The standard deviation of the market price of the security is 1.5 percent per day. Daily standard deviation they have given. The required confidence is 99 percent and they have given you the table. They did not tell you 2.33. Uh, 
Ah, since I had to tell you, see now in this question only came. 99% how to try now? Where is 99%? Where is 99%? Can you trace 99% in this table? Ah, 2.33, 3, you get this 0 0.9901. None of the combination you are getting that. So it is nothing but 2.33. Understood? So tell me how much you are required to determine the maximum possible investment. 4 marks, 4 minutes. How to decide now? And this is our hallmark of exam. Minus V R. This is our hallmark of exam. This is examination. Have you understood the concept of war clearly? Now, can you tell me how much is the maximum investment? And I am going to tell you students, at least 20 to 30 percent of the question every year comes like this. Same question, they will twist something, they will come from backward. Just to see, have you understood the concept? Have you understood the concept of war? What is war? War is the maximum amount of ready to lose. How do you calculate? V x into z into standard deviation. Now he is ready to lose 9 lakh 99. How much is he, you are going to invest? Simple. He is ready to lose. That's what he said. No, I am ready to lose. Maintaining my minimum balance is equal to investment. So first find out four days standard deviation because he is ready to going to trade for four days. 1.5 is per day, square root of 4, you get 3%, 0 0.03. Simple, uh, yeah. I really, and that to see, they have made one table there to 99% confidence level. You see how they will play. You should be smarter than that. And you have to prove them. Look, I understand this concept. Let the amount to be invested be X. So you know, R is 6,99,000. See, 4 mark, how much time? 1 minute. So, which is X, I don't know how much I need to invest. 2.33 into 0 0.03. So, if you solve this, you get 1 crore rupees. You say, I have to invest 1 crore. I have to take a position for 1 crore. Buy for 1 crore. Easy? If you take 1 crore, Maximum you might lose in 4 days 6,99,000. And if you lose 6,99,000, your bank balance is finished, you will square off your position. Finish. You will come out like this. But you are protected. Your position is protected because otherwise you have to sell your house, no? If you take for 5 crore position, the loss will come big and you may have to sell your jewelry. You have to sell your personal savings. But at least you don't know, maximum loss will be 6,99 for you. So you are ready to take that risk. So one, one crore is the maximum amount you are going to invest. Taking position means you will go and buy. In there are some schemes. You may buy today, sell tomorrow under that scheme you might have purchased. Whatever. You, or you might have invested your money also. Some extra money. You might have borrowed some money and invested. Because you know for sure that 6,99 is what you are going to lose. Because the moment 6,99 is lost, no, you square off your position. Done? Can we move to the next question? Last question for the day and for the chapter. Okay, please mark this question also important. Very nice, simple question. ABC is considering project X which is normally distributed, normal distribution and has got a mean return x bar 2 crore and standard deviation 1.6. In case of ABC limit, in case ABC loses on any project more than rupee 1 crore, there will be financial difficulty. That means I do not want to lose more than 1 crore. My x will be 1. What, what I desire, what I want is 1. I don't want to lose one. All right. Now, in case ABC loses, okay, well, determine the probability that the company will be in financial difficulty. You have to decide P. Normal standard distribution table is given 1.858687 and the area they have given. 
okay how to do it they asked me p right i need one z value x minus x bar by standard deviation if i do this i get a z value z value you plot and find out where they exactly it falls and do interpolation of black and shows simple question but practice this okay so first thing i am going to take for calculating probability of financial difficulty we have to find out the area under normal curve with the z score and we are going to use the equation z is equal to x minus x bar so how much is x 1 crore which i don't want to lose minus 2 crore is my average returns Okay, one crore is what I am ready to lose or with the gain I am going to get because total project cost is 2 crore, right? Total project cost, okay, so there is a catch here. Huh? Mean return of 2 crores. Now, ABC loses any project more than 1 crore, there will be financial difficulty. So, what I don't want to lose more than 1 crore x is 1 crore minus x bar is 2 crores point 0.6 it comes to minus This is my standard distribution to 1.6, 1.6, I am going to get a return, not going to lose more than 1. Take a cut of 1, okay, anyhow, okay. So next thing I am going to find out value of 1.875, so they have given me Z score. This is going to fall away 1.875 between 1.87, 1.88. The difference between the value is 0 0.01. So, what is the value of probability? Probability is nothing but 0.4693 minimum 1.87 plus 1.875. Okay, it's a minus value, so I'm going to minus it. Minus 1.87. See, in the uh, MTP, no, they have added it. Huh? Be careful. How can you add? Because in the normal standard distribution, this is the negative value. We have already seen negative value means we have to minus it. In one uh, BSM problem we have solved. Okay. So, I am going to minus it because it is a negative value. If it was plus, I would have added it. Okay. You refer my BSM. There we have done one problem. 1.875 minus 1.87 divided by into difference in point divided by difference in value. So, my probability comes to 46.90%. Which one? Ah, because it is middle, no middle value, right? Clear? Yeah, this question you practice students. Yeah, students, sorry. Yeah, there is one, uh, this thing. It is actually a negative return, okay. It is a minus 1 crore. It is a negative, no. They don't want to lose. Okay, now it is correct, right. It is a negative. Huh? They don't want to lose 1 crore. I am going to get 2 crores. This is a positive return. I don't want to lose. So, it is a minus 1. So, minus 1, minus 3, minus 2. So, comes 3 divided by 1.6, 1.875. Now, it is clear. Yeah. Uh, again, it is very nice. Uh, you have to always calculate. But yeah, final answer will be correct because I would have verified it from the material. Yes, I can move to the next one. Next slide. So, you are going to get 46.9. So, in the study material, if you go to the MTP, they have just added it. 
okay addition is not there i say it's a print mistake maybe so they get if they add that 0 0.03 will be 0 0.9.6 no this is a negative value no Uh, the average, but uh, that scores are interpolated, no? not averaged. Here it is exact. That's why you average, you got the same value. It is exactly middle. Um, no problem, but keep in mind. Keep in mind. Let us see if any uh, uh, corrigendum comes. Okay, so that's it. That's all about this chapter. Three questions marked important. Practice this thoroughly. Clear no students. Okay, so we'll continue in the next class. So that's it. A small chapter.